Hello there guys and welcome back again here to my YouTube channel and for today's video I'll be sharing you my ultimate Qatar build for PvP and grinding. Uh, this build is my top choice for versatility, it excels in MVP team rewards as you don't always need blacksmith for weapon perfectionists and it offers substantial damage. Moreover, the synergy between its skills make it highly effective in terms of PvP. It's also great for singling out and defeating opponents one by one. And when it comes to guild event, this build proves to be advantageous as well. Its versatility and damage output can contribute significantly to the success of your guild. Uh, whether it's defending or attacking in guild-related activities, this build skills and synergy make it valuable asset for the entire guild. But before we move into the video, I just want to give you a heads up that we are still providing pilot services, fixing gear, especially for the upcoming third jobs. And if you are new here to my YouTube channels, make sure to click the subscribe button so you can be updated on my latest upload. So without further ado, let's get started. First, let's talk about the totem, especially the essential one for this Qatar build, the Stealth Stop Rush Totem. But why is this totem necessary? First and foremost, our objective is to consistently fill up our Shadow Meter Gauge. This ensures that we benefit from boosted damage and have the capability to summon a Shadow Clone when needed. This totem plays a crucial role in helping us further enhance our damage output. It becomes a key tool in maximizing the effectiveness of our build, ensuring that we can unleash powerful attacks and make the most of our Shadow-related abilities. Now let's move on to the discussion of the Shadow Meter Gauge. In contrast to a Dagger build where we primarily gain advantage through increased crit rate, with the Qatar build our focus shifts to the attack boost provided by the Shadow Meter Gauge. As we accumulate Shadow Points, reaching 100 Shadow Points transform our 8k attack into a formidable 17k attack. This emphasizes how crucial it is for us to consistently fill the Shadow Meter Gauge. The boosted attack not only enhances our damage output significantly but also plays a big role in the overall effectiveness of our Qatar build. Now let's proceed with discussing the skills required for this build. First and foremost is the Rolling Cross Slash. This skill serves as a potent single target attack dealing 1350% neutral damage and additional advantage is the ability to trigger proc cards as demonstrated in the video. Another notable feature of this skill is that it reduces the cooldown of your other skill by 1 second. Moving on to the next skill, we have the Rolling Edge. This is an AoE attack capable of damaging up to 10 players or 10 enemies in the surrounding area. The wide reach of the skill make it effective when dealing with multiple opponents, allowing us to effectively handle group of enemies in various situations. Now let's discuss the combo. As demonstrated in the video, we observed that the damage output ranges from 130 to 142k when using Rolling Cross Slash. However, when I connect with Rolling Edge, my damage doubles. This highlights the significance of incorporating a well-timed combo into our strategy so we can maximize our damage. Next skill in our arsenal is the Dark Claw. Uh, this skill specializes in crowd damage, delivering a significant impact by inflicting 1,500% non-elemental physical damage. Moreover, it adds a debuff called Rapture for 5 seconds. This debuff not only increases our next attack by 75%, but also decreases the enemy healing received by 50%. Our final skill in this formidable arsenal is the Phantom Dance. This skill is designed for crowd damage, allowing us to pierce through the battlefield like a shadow. It delivers 4 instances of area damage targeting a maximum of 10 enemies. 
each instance of Phantom Dance deals 750% damage and with each hit on the enemies we gain 5 points of shadow. Furthermore, the damage escalate to 975% with each subsequent hit. This skill is not only showcasing impressive area damage capabilities but also contributes to building up our shadow points aligning with the core strategy of our Qatar build. Now let me teach you the final combo. First is to initiate with Dark Glow to inflict Rapture on the enemy to set the stage for the assault. Second is proceed with the Phantom Dance utilize this skill to accumulate additional shadow points. Follow through with Rolling Edge execute the skill to amplify the damage potential of the subsequent Rolling Cross Slash. And lastly, evaluate the situation for the ultimate usage, assess the battlefield and decide whether to unleash the ultimate skill for a potent finish or alternatively capitalize the augmented attack power derived from accumulating 100 shadow points. Speaking of the ultimate skill, our ultimate skill for this build is Blind Burst. These skills operate by consuming all shadow points summoning a shadow clone to fight alongside you for 10 seconds. Remarkably, the shadow clone mimics the same skills attack that you use during this duration. The skill damage output is 70% of the original damage and the Qatar mastery of the shadow clone can also contribute to the owner overall effectiveness and this ultimate skill adds a dynamic element to the combat strategy providing a temporary allies that mirrors our attack and significantly contribute to our overall damage output. For stats allocation, go with STR to maximize your attack, then follow up with Luck to benefit from increased critical damage while using Glaive Qatar, then Vitality for max HP. For skill stats allocation, you can simply copy or mimic this build. For gears and equipment, I highly recommend adopting a balanced approach by using the Dragon set. This set provides a well-rounded combination of stats contributing to both defense and offense. Regarding the weapon, the Glaive Qatar is preferable over the Gladiator Qatar. The Glaive Qatar allows you to maximize your damage output consistently across all your attacks, unlike Gladiator Qatar which heavily relies on ultimate skills. And additionally, for cards, uh, consider using two proc cards to enhance your skill and two crit cards to boost your crit damage hit rate. And this card setup ensure a good balance between skill effect and crit damage. Uh, further optimizing your character performance in various combat. For better scores, actually this is going to be expensive because you need good cores for this build to be effective. Number one to that is the Whirlwind and then the Ghost Slash. Thank you.
here is my intake. Uh, in a scenario where both players are whales, Qatar build can potentially achieve a one-hit kill or one-hit knockout surpassing the dagger build in terms of immediate burst damage. The ninja move skill of Qatar build is notably potent. However, when it comes to free-to-play players facing each other, the dagger build may have a stronger advantage even if the Qatar build has an impressive burst damage. The dagger build is more accessible for free-to-play players to strengthen consistently. The dagger build versatility and the potential of the sustained damage, especially with the various status effect, can prove to be more effective in free-to-play matchup. It's also acknowledgeable that the Qatar build, when well equipped with the right items and high ignore defense stats, can potentially achieve remarkable burst damage. Yet, there's a point made that the dagger build is easier to enhance and may have more resilience due to its ability to apply status effect, making it formidable choice even against tankier or tanky opponents. In essence, the Qatar build burst damage has a limit and if it fails to secure a kill with a full combo, there might be a challenge. On the other hand, the dagger build when activating all its status effect can effectively cut through the opponents including tanks. I hope that this insight highlighting the strength and consideration for both build assists you in deciding which one is more suitable for your playstyle and preference. And again guys, thank you for watching my video. If this video was helpful for you, just make sure to click the subscribe button so you can be updated sa mga latest uploads natin. And again guys, see you on my next video.